welcome to my channel, the Mild Feminist channel. Welcome back. This is my channel where I talk about all sorts of things like feminine wellness, sexual wellness, and much, much more, really. <laughs> if you could, I would really appreciate it if you would like this video as well as subscribe to my channel. I'd love to be able to make more videos for you guys and that would really help me to be able to do that. If you could also comment on the video, I'd love to know what you guys would like to see in my other videos, so please let me know what you would like for me to do my content on. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty of things. Today I'm gonna to be doing an in-depth tutorial on how to put in a menstrual cup. The cup that I'm going to be demonstrating for you guys today is like this bell-shaped cup. If you saw my previous video on the benefits of using a menstrual cup and the size you should be using, you know that there's lots of different types of cups out there, but this is just the one that I have, and it's also the most common that you would see when purchasing cups, so I thought this one would be the first one I should do. Eventually, I am going to be covering a tutorial like this on other cups, other types of cups, and the, maybe the ones that you saw in my previous video as well. But for today, this is just the one I'm doing. I just don't have those cups yet, so eventually that will be coming, so stay tuned. <laughs> If you're unsure about using a menstrual cup or you're not sure what size you should be getting, skip on over to my previous video where I talk about the benefits of using a menstrual cup and the different kinds and then also sizes. That way you can make sure you're purchasing the best one for you. And then you can watch this video after that on how to put it in. <laughs> Okay, now let's get into the fun part of the video. We're gonna talk about the anatomy of the cup first. All right, so why don't we talk about the stem of the cup first. This flat, or this long little like tube here is the stem. Mine's a little bit bigger. The sizing of the stems kind of depend on the brand and the type of cup. Mine's a little bit bigger because it has like a squeeze valve in it. Um, I can leave a link to this one down below. I have a description of what the, the valve is for in my previous video, so I'm not going to talk about that in this one, but the sizing of the stem kind of depends on the brand of the cup. The stem, for the most part, unless you're using like a cup like this, but generally the stem doesn't really serve a huge purpose. It's kind of there for like your security. If you're like freaking out, you need to get it out right now. Though generally you wouldn't really pull it out by the cup. So it's just kind of there for whatever reasons. You could trim them if it felt like it if you felt like it was bothering you, but generally I wouldn't just leave it there. You never know. You might need it at some point, so just leave the stem alone. But just know that that's kind of something that's just there. <laughs> okay, so moving on to the base. So this is the base down here. You can kind of see it's got like lines on it. That's just kind of this part right here. So that's the base. This is generally where you would grab the cup when you're pulling it out. So that's really the most important part of the cup in my opinion is the base and to really know where that is. So just know that it's like this part of the cup, not the stem, not the bulk of the cup, this part of the cup. So that's the base. So next we're gonna talk about like the bulk part of the cup, the opening. This part is where it's gonna open and form like a suction against the vaginal wall and then all the blood would like funnel in from there. So that's like how the cup basically works is by the cup opening all the way into the vagina and then it funnels all the, all the blood in from there. Another part of the cup are these little like holes kind of at the top. I hope I can show you that properly. There we go. So that little hole kind of at the top. Uh, some cups have like two or three, but that's just to make sure that it suctions properly to the vaginal wall. But when you're cleaning it, you do make sure you do need to make sure that you're cleaning those out and there's nothing blocking it just so that you're not getting like an infection from stuff getting stuck in there. So that's the anatomy of the cup. Next we're going to move on to caring for your cup, like how to clean it and all that jazz, because that's an important part of owning a cup. 
So how you would clean your cups are, it's really basic, nothing fancy. Really the only thing you should be doing is using soap and water on it and then also boiling it to sterilize it. You really, really, really need to make sure you're not using anything like bleach, baking soda, vinegar, oils, or really anything else on your cups like ever. Using stuff like that um, can basically just compromise the integrity of the medical grade silicone and that is something you just don't really want because you're going to have to purchase a cup sooner than you need to and why? So just use soap and water and boiling water on your cups. So with that, let's talk about actually cleaning your cup. So when you clean your cup, you're going to have to take it out. You know, you take it out morning and night, maybe in the middle of the day, depending on your flow. But generally, you're just going to be taking out in the morning and then again at night. And when you do that, you're going to make sure you're just washing it with soap and water and then you can reinsert it. So it's really easy to do. Not that difficult. You know, just make sure you're washing it every single time you take it out. So and then after your period, at the end of your cycle, or <laughs> if you like drop it on the floor or drop it in the toilet, which, you know, it's probably going to happen because it happens to everyone, but if that happens and or at the end of your period, you're going to want to boil it on the stove. How you're going to boil it on the stove is you're just going to throw it into a pan, put some water in it, put the stove on or put the pan on the stove. I turn it to like a medium high heat. I just don't want it too high. Just, I don't know, it just makes me feel better, but I just do medium high heat because I know it's going to get to a boil that way. But the biggest thing is that you want to make sure that the water is boiling for a full eight minutes with the cup inside the water. You want to make sure that it's a full eight minutes because that's how long it takes for it to fully sterilize. You can leave it in a little bit longer if you wanted, though I wouldn't leave it in for too long just because the water is going to start to evaporate and then it can like dry out your cup or something. So just not like too long, but make sure that it is for a full eight minutes. All right, let's move on to how to insert this bad boy. <laughs> First off, I'd like to say that inserting your cup can be kind of difficult when you're first learning how to use one. So give yourself a lot of time, a lot of patience to really learn how to do it. It can take a couple of cycles to really get good at it. I promise you'll get good at it. I really think you'll you'll love using a cup once you get good at putting it in and taking it out. It's just kind of something that, you know, you're never really good at something when you first start trying it, so make sure that you really try it and give it a good shot because I, I strongly believe that you'll love it. But anyways, let's <laughs> talk about actually putting it in. So there's a couple of ways to fold your cups. The first way is how I've seen it done on like instructional stuff from the companies which is not really my favorite, though I think you should try it because it, you might end up really liking it, but I'll show you that way first. So what you would do is you're gonna take the cup, I'll show you kind of just how to fold it. You're gonna put your finger at the top of the cup, fold it down, and then back. Kind of like that, and then fold it like a taco. Kind of like that. The reason why I don't love this type of fold is this thing. This like little lip on it. That's annoying to me. I just don't love. I think it's uncomfortable when I put it in. But that's one way that they recommend, that's how they, like companies would recommend putting it in. So give it a shot, you never know, it might work well for you. But how I like to put it in is I just, I think it's easier to fold it this way too, so I just like it better. <laughs> but I just fold it like a straight up taco. It's not pushed in like that other one, it's just a taco really. I like it because it, you can see that it's nice and smooth all the way down, so I think it's easier to get in. But you never know, you might like the other way, so get, but give them both a shot, you, you never know. Okay, so that's how you would fold it, but now let's actually talk about putting it in, because that's kind of an important part of using a menstrual cup is putting it in. So when you have it folded, you're going to grab kind of towards the top-ish, 
and then you're just gonna insert it into the vagina from here until your fingers kind of meet your vaginal opening and you can't really push it in any farther and then you're gonna have to like scoot your fingers down a little bit and then push it all the way in and you can push it in enough to where the stem is all the way inside the vagina or you can leave it sticking out just a little bit if that makes you feel more comfortable but once it's all the way in it's going to open on its own kind of like that so i'll show you again fold insert shimmy down insert and then it's just gonna open. The only thing I would say about when you actually have it in is just make sure you're not shoving it like all the way up to your cervix. That's not how these types of cups are meant to operate if they have this little stem on them. These ones are meant to just sit right inside the vagina. They don't even really go as high as a tampon. So just make sure you're not pushing it too high up there. The most important thing I would like to point out is that you have to, have to, have to, for the love of God, check your suction. You have to check your suction. If you don't, you may have a bad suction on the vaginal wall and then you're gonna like bleed all over yourself. And that's obviously not something anybody wants. So just make sure, dear Lord, check your suction. <laughs> How you're gonna check your suction is a couple of ways, but the main thing that you are looking for when you check your suction, you're gonna just like slip a finger up against the vaginal wall in the cup, it's not gonna hurt. I promise you have plenty of space in there. But um, you're gonna slip your finger up into your vagina next to the cup and you're feeling for things like dents. So like a little dent like this, a fold in the lip, kind of like this, so it's not opened all the way, or kind of a squished cup. Like if it feels like it's squished, kind of like a sandwich, like it's collapsed, that also means you don't have a good suction. You also need to make sure that your cervix, if you have like a lower cervix, I, I do sometimes, sometimes I don't, but if your cervix is just a little bit lower, what can happen is your cervix can kind of come on the side of the cup at the opening and like prevent it from, it'll feel like it's open all the way, but it'll kind of be crooked a little bit and your cervix will be on the side here. And basically that's where all your blood comes from. So if your cervix isn't over the opening of the cup, then the blood is gonna run right down the side and out and your cup isn't gonna catch anything. So just make sure that your cervix, you can't feel your cervix anywhere around the cup. That's That would be preventing it from catching everything. For those of you that don't know, your cervix is inside the vagina about one finger length in, and it feels kind of firmish, like a, I guess like a bouncy ball, though some sometimes it's firmer than other times, but it'll kind of feel round like a ball as well, and then it'll have like a little dimple type hole in the center of it. <laughs> So that's your cervix. If you don't know or you haven't like explored up there, just go and check it out. Make sure you know where your cervix is because that's an important part of your body. <laughs> but that's how you would be able, that would, that's what you would feel if you're looking for your cervix when checking the suction on your cup. So now that you know what you would be looking for when you're checking your suction, let's talk about how to fix it if you don't have a good suction because you have a bad suction about half the time. So you're gonna need to f learn how to fix it. One way is obviously just to take the cup out and put it in again, but that can get time consuming. So there are ways that you can fix a bad suction. So the first way that I would recommend trying to fix your suction is by just grabbing it by the base. So again, you're just going to grab it down here, not the stem. Don't grab it by the stem, grab it by the base. And then you're just going to twist it around inside of the vagina, kind of like this. And by twisting it around, sometimes it just kind of shifts it enough so that it can open all the way. If that doesn't work, another trick that I have found works well for me is to simply, it sounds kind of weird, but you would slip your finger up backwards, kind of like this. 
and you're going to gently press against the vaginal wall. Just so gently, like, keep your fingers straight, kind of like this. And what that'll do is it'll give it, hopefully, enough space for the cup to open all the way. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I feel like it works more often than not. But if those two things don't work, then you probably will just have to take your cup out and then reinsert it and check your suction again. I promise you, you'll get really good at taking it out, putting it in again, taking it out, putting it in again. It's not even going to be something you really have to think about. It's just going to be kind of part of your life for like a week while you're on your period and it's like not that big of a deal because it's at least better than having to take a tampon out and changing your tampon every like hour and a half or more. <laughs> so now that we've talked about kind of how to put it in, why don't we talk about some positions that work well for putting it in. There's a few ways that work well. I think um, I have my preferences, though I think everyone again should try them all because not all of these positions are gonna work well for every person, just kind of depending on your body and how comfortable you are with certain positions. So give some of them a shot if they feel good to you. Find one that works well for you. I'm sure there's other ways to put it in, but these are just ones that I've seen and tried and they work well. So the first one is sitting on the toilet, basically, you know, nothing fancy, kind of how you would put in a tampon, which is just kind of leaning to the side a little bit and just reaching in front of you and putting it in. You're going to need to like spread your legs quite a bit. You may even need to put your like one leg on the toilet or on a stool or something like that. That way works well for me, like obviously in public, that's how I typically would do it. I think it's somewhat easy, though that one may, may take a little bit more practice than, I don't know, squatting, I guess. Which, speaking of which, let's talk about squatting. So when you would do a squat for insertion, make sure that it's like a full squat. I'm talking like but almost touching the floor, <laughs> knees like all the way apart, full, full squat. This position, while it's not the most comfortable position to be in for a long period of time, the reason why I like it is I it like spreads everything out a little bit and it keeps my body symmetrical, so it's easier for me to sometimes reach up there and feel around a little bit and with it being a little bit more spread apart you have a little bit more room for your hand right there <laughs> also that's how I put it in in the mornings like if I'm in the shower sometimes I put my cup in in the shower and take it out in the shower it's just a little bit easier that way but that's how I do it when I'm in the shower that might be something for you guys to try it, it kind of eliminates some of the mess but a uh, full squat is how I would do that and it makes it for me a little bit easier kind of depending on my mood. I have bad knees so sometimes a full squat isn't the best option for me but give that one a shot as well. Another one that I've seen some instructional type videos and pictures on is a standing position and you would put like your foot on the toilet or again on a stool or a chair or something like that and then you can just kind of reach in front of you again and insert it like that. Again, I've seen that with like tampons too, so that might be a more comfortable position for you to try as well. You can also use any of these positions when you would remove your cup, which is actually our next topic, so let's move on to that. The most important thing when removing your cup is making sure that you grab it in the right spot. You wanna make sure that you're grabbing it by the base down here or a little bit higher if you can reach up that high. You just want to make sure that you're not grabbing it by the stem because that's not going to break your suction. It's just going to pull on it a little bit. Again, that's how these cups work is they form a suction on the vaginal wall. So you have to break the suction by forming like a dent in the cup like that. So when you would grab it, you're just going to pinch it pretty hard and then you're just going to pull it straight out and empty it into the toilet. If you're having trouble reaching your cup or getting a good grip on it or whatever, something that I have found that works really well, in my opinion, it sounds a little, it sounds a little weird, but it works really well for me, is you would just bear down like you're dropping a load. <laughs> so if you're like pushing like you're having a poop, <laughs> you can push the cup out just a little bit. That's just how that works. When you're pushing like you're having a poop, the cup is going to just slide out of your vagina just a little bit. It's going to come out just 
about maybe like that much. But then as you can see, it gives you a good opportunity to grab the cup and then you can pull it out. So it makes it a little easier to grab it than you're not like trying to fish around up there to get it out. But, and that also you will work if you're like panicking, like you're freaking out that you can't get it out or whatever. If you push like you're having a poop, it's gonna push the cup out a little bit, grab it by the base and pull it out. One thing I'd also like to mention about removing your cup is just make sure you have a good grip on it <laughs> because I've heard some horror stories, not horror stories, but just some like interesting stories. And like I've read some funny re reviews of people who like grab their cup and they don't have a good grip on it or whatever. And they like let go of it as soon as it's out of their body and it like pops open and it's like, a massacre happened in the bathroom. <laughs> There's like blood sprayed everywhere. So just make sure you have a good grip on the cup when you pull it out and then you can just empty it into the toilet. <laughs> well, 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 I believe we have reached the end of this video. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope that you learned a lot and I hope that you give a cup a try. I really believe that these are the greatest inventions in the world. So I think everyone should try them. They're so much better than having to deal with a tampon and the toxic shock syndrome and constantly have to buying tampons and changing them all the freaking time. Who has time for that? But Anyways, please like and comment on this video. I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to get ideas for future comment or for future videos for you guys. Though please be nice in the comments. I'm sensitive, so don't make me cry. <laughs> but I'd also love it if you guys could subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have lots of fun content coming your way. More period stuff, pregnancy stuff, kegel stuff, sexual wellness stuff, birth stuff. I'm a doula here in Denver, Colorado, so that's something I talk about as well. Which, speaking of which, if you're looking for a doula, slide into my DMs on Instagram. On my Instagram, you can follow my Instagram as well. I have tons of fun stuff on there too. But for now, I will see you in the next video. Bye!